Hey everyone, we're excited that you joined us for service and we want to extend an invitation to you to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. At any point in the service that you feel the, the desire or the tugging on your heart to make that decision, please find a host or a hostess near you and they will direct you to one of the pastoral team that you can make that decision. We've got a change of clothes. We've got everything you need to baptize you today. If you're ready, we're ready.
everyone. We're excited that you joined us for service, and we want to extend an invitation to you to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. At any point in the service that you feel the, the desire or the tugging on your heart to make that decision, please find a host or a hostess near you and they will direct you to one of the pastoral team that you can make that decision. We've got a change of clothes. We've got everything you need to baptize you today. If you're ready, we're ready. stand to our feet this morning. Welcome to First Apostolic Church. I'll be glad to be in the house of the Lord today. Man, it's so good to see everyone. Come on, let's just lift up hands to heaven before we even begin to sing it. Let's love him in this place. Father, we're singing songs to you, Lord God, of praise and worship and honor. Oh, we lift up your name in the sanctuary, Lord, with our brothers and our sisters. Lord, be pleased in what you hear today, Father. We give you all glory.
on if you feel that freedom just lift up your hands and say lord i'm thankful for the freedom i feel oh where your spirit is lord there's such liberty there's there's a spirit that's here lord god that i feel so comfortable in i thank you for your freedom oh thank you lord god oh for the healing in the body lord god that you've given the church today amen anybody thankful you're a part of the church of the living god hallelujah hallelujah amen well we take out a time in the service and it's not something we take out of the service as in it's not a part of worship because this is very biblical but we take about five minutes and we just get out in the aisles and we just fellowship together it's more than just a meet and a greet it's it's a time where you can get out and just talk about hey has god been good to you because god's been good to me why don't we get out now? Let's take about five minutes. We're going to put it on the, on the screens. About five minutes. Choir's going to be getting ready to sing. Come on, let's find somebody maybe you haven't met before. In a church this size, sometimes you can get used to being in the same section and being around the same people. Why don't you get out of your section? We got so many guests that are here. Thank you for making this your place of worship today. It's such an honor. I've already got to meet people from Kentucky. So glad to have them. Oh, we just got... Yes, I see all over this house. Come on, make sure that they know that they're welcome at First Apostolic Church today.
clap your hands now and give God praise. Come on as we enter into our next part of the worship service with our sanctuary choir. God, you're so good. You may be seated. Before they begin, let me let me make a quick announcement and just I'm thinking about this because I've just met some brand new families that are new to the church and I'm so excited about that. Um, our welcome home series at the end of this service today. Um, if you go out of this doorway right here, there is our, our Connect Center. It's a room where we have uh, some chairs set around, and uh, we're going we're gonna to bring in uh, some people that are going to talk to you about what's going on here at the church. We want to get to know you better. Um, if you want to make this your home church and you've not been a part of the Welcome Home series yet, please, please, this is a great week. They're doing the campus tour today. Uh, this will be a great week to join. Uh, be a part of our Welcome Home series because we want you. We want you here. We love that you're here worshiping with us. Come on, let's just lift up hands before the choir sings. God, we love you, and we're so thankful, Lord God, today. Lord God, that you're always here for us. Lord God, that you care for us. And Lord God, you love us. We bless your name today. Hallelujah.
out for me. Come on, just take him just for a moment, just love him. Work it out for me, Jesus. Yes, you are. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, clap your hands unto the Lord. He's the great worker. Always working it out. Come on, sing this with me, choir. Sing, this is the day of salvation. What a time to be alive. Start looking for the evidence. Start living in the promises. feeling just love him in this place yeah Ooh. come on chosen generation come on sing about it
shut up in my bones. Hey, it's like fire shut up in my bones. Hey, mm, let me sing a sing. I'm going down mm, to the river. Yeah, talk about it. I'm gonna be buried alive. Jesus name, I want to show my heavenly father the man I used to be We've come to praise him this morning and praise the Lord, everybody. If our ushers would make their way to the front at this time, we're going to go before the Lord in prayer and we're going to give of tithe and offerings this morning. But I want to say, um, before I go into the prayer request, a tremendous thank you, thank you, thank you for the last two weeks. The staff of this church, the people of this church, have given themselves, burn the candle at both ends, and sometimes I do declare in the middle, to have a successful general ministry conference in Chattanooga, and then turn right around and head to Strong Tower. And uh, nobody has a calculated amount of hours that the staff of this church, all the departments of this church put into making those two major events not just successful, but extremely, extremely successful. Would you help me say thank you to the staff of this church right now? Everybody from audio video to ushers to bookstores. 
Thank you. Thank you. Come on, it needs to be a little bit more. I, I just got to tell you, it needs to be a little. Thank you. Thank you, Maryville. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Music department, music department, awesome. Everything that was done the last, the last two weeks. How many are glad we have Strong Tower? It's life changing. It's not just a youth camp. It is a life changing. It is a life changing camp. And I, I so appreciate, so glad to have our Salinas family with us from Santiago, Chile. And they're with us now for several, going to be with us for several more weeks. So most familiar. So most familiar. We, we are family. I want to give some prayer requests this morning. And I want to tell you this. On the day of Pentecost, the sinners that were pricked in their heart, the sinners that were pricked in their heart, guilty of the worst sin that could ever be committed, the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. The preaching woke them up and they made a statement. Men and brethren, what shall we do? Their question is, how are we going to reverse this? How are we going to undo the crucifixion of Jesus? It's impossible. But let me tell you about the power of prayer today. The power of prayer, the power of prayer, God does for us what it's impossible for us to do for ourselves. We crucified him. What shall we do? No worries. This same Jesus whom you crucified, God hath raised him up, both Lord and Christ. So God does for us through prayer what we can't do for ourselves. Aren't you thankful for that today? That God can do what we cannot, what we cannot undo. I have a very, in, in, in one sense of the word, it's a, a heartfelt, a sad a prayer request for the Lee family. But in the spiritual sense uh, someone said uh, brother Lee has been been dying for some time actually brother Lee has been going toward living like he has never lived before for some time it is called the blessed hope it is called the blessed hope but yesterday around 6 30 brother Lee heard the voice of God say to him come on home child come on home he leaves in the wake, he leaves in the wake of family that's very heavy hearted today. And uh, let's lift up a prayer for Mother Lee that God would touch her. And let's lift up a prayer for all of Brother Lee's uh, children that are very heavy hearted uh, this morning. We're privileged to pastor uh, several of his uh, grandchildren and great grandchildren here at, at this church. Uh, the arrangements of the funeral are not known at this time. Um, as soon as we find out, maybe we'll be able to announce it tonight in the evening service. Uh, the, the funeral service will be here uh, in Maryville, here in the auditorium. But the times where they've not yet went to the funeral home. And so uh, we'll be giving you those. We'll be giving you those requests just as soon as we can. How many is ready for God to undo what we've done? How many, how many needs God to move today? How many needs God to touch today or this morning? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, we come before you. Lord, there is none like you, God, not in heaven above or the earth beneath. There's no God besides you. You are a God that holds out the sepulcher when we call upon your name, Jesus. Lord, you said, if any man will come unto me, I will in no wise cast him out. Lord, we cry from the depths of our heart today for comfort for the Lee family. We cry out today, oh God, that your angel, your presence, God, would be in the home of Mother Lee this morning. That, God, you would wrap your arms around her and you would hold her, God. Lord, now that her house is empty and you would hold her, God. Lord, now that her house is empty, Lord, that, God, your presence would be felt there in a much real way this morning. 
Lord Jesus, God, I ask you this morning to move upon all the requests, Lord. Every hand that is lifted, God. Lord, the Mary Crowder that is at home today, God. Lord, I pray, God, for Sister Step today. Lord, I ask, God, that you would continue to touch Sister Step. Lord, I ask you to touch Sister Ankenbauer today. Lord, your hands would be upon the, the needs of your people here today. Father, if there's troubled marriages here, Lord, touch them in the counselor. Lord, if there's sick bodies here today, let there be healing that will go forth in this room. Lord, if there's confusion of mind, Lord, let the peace of the Holy Ghost come down today. Let the peace of the Holy Ghost, God, move today. Father, I thank you for health in my body. Lord, I thank you today that you've given me the ability to earn an income, to feed, shelter, clothe my family. I thank you today, God, for the revelation of the covenant in the area of finances, of tithe and offerings. I thank you today, God, that your scripture says to bring all the tithe into the storehouse and you would open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that shall, that you can, there not room enough to receive. Lord, I thank you today for the tithe and offerings that will come in these containers today. But from these containers, the tithe and offerings will have a ripple effect around the world. God, people in other countries will feel the effect of the tithe and offerings that are received here today. Lord, I give you the praise and give you the honor. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. And everybody said amen. You may be seated as the usher waits upon you. If he comes to the end of your pew, even if you planned on giving or not, please assist them in passing the containers around so that we can all have an opportunity to give. Let's continue to worship the Lord. Put your hands together. Let's worship him right now. Come on, put your hands together, everybody. Thank you, Lord. Been hearing the same old voice Tell the same old lies If you are trying to fill The same old holes inside There's a better life There's a better life If you got pain He's a pain taker
I am glad that he is a chain breaker. If you're not only glad, but you're a recipient of it, would you give him praise right now as we begin? Oh, what a mighty God, what a mighty God, what a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve this morning. What a mighty, mighty, mighty God that we serve today. I want to say as you're looking in your Bible for John chapter 4 and verse number 19. John chapter 4 and verse number 19. If you're new here to First Apostolic Church and it doesn't seem like that there's hardly a service that goes by without... Um, a new family uh, coming to First Apostolic Church. Sometimes they're local families that are finding the church through our daycare, through our school, through our webcast. Sometimes there are uh, people from other states that um, jobs move them here. And there's also times when a family has been watching this and wants their children to be a part of Apostolic Church. Christian Academy, and we welcome, we welcome you here, and on Sundays after the altar service, as Brother Erickson said, if you're new here, you need to go to the Connect Room and uh, find out how to get connected around here, find out uh, how, uh, you know, everybody is a piece, and if you're new here, you know I've gave you this, this little line, everyone is a piece to a puzzle. I didn't say you're puzzling. I said you're a piece. You're a piece to the puzzle. And you, you fit in. You, you, you fit in. We want to find, we want to find where you, you fit in in the kingdom so that we can advance the kingdom, right? That we can advance the kingdom. John chapter 4 and verse number 19. John chapter 4, verse 19. Thank you, choir. Thank you, musicians. Thank you for leading us in worship. The woman saith unto, unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshiped in this mountain. And ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor at Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship, you know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Turn over to John chapter 17 and verse number 17. I believe you caught on to the key word here this morning. I believe you caught on to the key word, worship, worship. John 17, 17. Sanctify them. Through thy truth. Now Jesus is praying for the apostles that are about to have Pentecost. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Thy word is truth. For a few moments today, and I'd like to gather us in the altar after I have put the word in us by the help of God. I believe we'll receive the word today and we'll gather up around the altar. I believe the Holy Ghost will come sit down on us and touch us. But I want to minister to you today on the two components of worship. The two components of worship. Father, I ask you this morning that you would anoint my heart. I ask you today, Lord, that you would touch my mind, touch, Lord, my heart. Lord, help me, God, to be led by your spirit and to feed your sheep. Lord, these are your people today. You shed your blood for them and you filled them with your spirit. But Lord, you have called me into the ministry and placed them under my care. 
And Lord, I want to feed this church today with your word. Lord, I want to feed them, God, with your word today. Now, Lord, I pray not only for myself, but I pray for them today, that their ears would be attentive, that their hearts would be open, that, Lord, they would be open today and hungry today for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise before you're seated, please. Give Jesus a hand of praise before you're seated. The two components of worship, the two components of worship. You cannot have true worship without these essential components. You can't have true worship you can't have the kind that God seeks after unless you have these two components. First off, let me tell you that worship has a life-changing power. There is life-changing power when we worship God. It is powerful. It is TNT. It is nuclear, if I could use all those words. The unbelievable power of worship, of worship. I'll tell you how powerful worship is. Satan wants it. Anything the devil wants, anything the devil wants, you can, you can, you can just understand it's valuable and it's powerful. You know, there's certain things you don't have to lock up around your house. I have never pulled out of the driveway and said, honey, I, I, I've been working in the flower bed and I left the shovel out there and we better put that shovel in, in the garage or somebody will steal it. I've never done that because most people don't, thieves don't steal shovels. It's too much work. But lawnmowers, weed eaters, chainsaws, better lock them up. Because if a thief comes by, they want those. Can I tell you today that what convinces me that worship is important is Satan wants worship. You realize the whole temptation of Jesus in the wilderness was over one thing. It wasn't over making stones into bread. It wasn't over a display of falling off the temple and being caught by angels. You know, it was over worship. Worship. When he finally got to it, he said, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. Number one, he was a liar. Those kingdoms were not his to give. I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world if you will what? You just got to worship me. You just got to worship me. If I can get him to worship, the plan of redemption has been thrown out the window. If I can get him to worship, no man, woman will ever be redeemed. Worship is powerful. Not only is worship powerful, but look in Matthew 15, 21, there was a woman who had, who had a daughter that was grievously vexed of the devil, tormented, suicidal. The Bible says then in Matthew 15, 21, then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Has anybody in this room ever cried out for your children? Anybody in this room ever just said, Oh, God, help them? Sure there is. Can you get in the shoes of this woman? who has a daughter that is grievously tormented, suicidal of the devil, but she hears about Jesus. She comes and she makes her cry to him. But verse 23, but he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought Jesus saying, send her away for she crieth after us. In other words, seems a little out of character. What it is, because he came to the Jew first 
He came to offer an opportunity. Now the Canaanite, the Gentile woman is going to have her day. There's going to be a day that she's going to have, but the time clock is not ticked yet for the Gentiles. She's crying out. But the time hasn't come. Finally, she kept on crying and became such a nuisance, nuisance that the disciples said, Lord, could you do something about that? I can't hardly eat my meal without her standing out there crying for you. Lord, would you do something about that? Jesus, he said, send her away. Verse 24, but he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In other words, it's not time yet. I'm not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But would you notice a game changer here? Look at a game changer here. Verse 25, it's a game changer. Then came she and worshiped him. It's one thing to cry out for the Lord for your need. It's another thing to worship him. It's one thing to cry out, God, touch my daughter, my son. It's another thing to start saying, I worship you. I magnify you. You're the almighty God. I worship you. <laughs> then came she and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not meat. It is not right to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. Now right there, he just called her a dog. Now you talk about a fence level, not 99% of us would leave, 110% of us would leave. He just called me a dog. But do you know what? When your desire to get a miracle is greater than your meter to be offended... I guess, I can just say, how bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? He said, uh, it's not right to take the children's bread and cast it to a dog, but listen to what she said. Because worship has a way of giving us a divine perspective. Worship has a way of us seeing things that you can't see unless you're a worshiper. Who would have ever thought when the Lord said, it's not right for me to take the children's bread to the Jews? and cast it to the dogs, the Gentiles. Who would have ever thought of this? But listen to her in verse 27. And she said, truth, Lord. She said, it's the truth, we're dogs. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. She said, I'm a dog, you're exactly right. But said, even in a Jewish house, the Jews allow the dogs, the family pets, to come in and sit around the table and eat the crumbs. She said, I'm a dog, I'm a dog, Lord. I'm just wanting a crumb. That's all I've got to have, God, is just a crumb. Listen to Jesus. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Let me tell you, worship is a very powerful thing. Hell wants it, and worship can even move the mind of God. <laughs> worship. But there's two things that you must have in order to worship. There's two things that you must have. I'm glad that we lift our voices up. I'm glad that we clap our hands. I'm glad that we dance. I'm glad that we shout. But can I tell you, those are all the after effects of the two components. The first thing you have to have to worship is the Word of God. The Word of God. The second thing you must have to worship is the Spirit of God. Jesus plainly told the woman on the subject of worship. He said, you think places is where you worship. You think over there on that mountain is where you all worship, and over there on that mountain is where the Jews worship. But he said, the true worshipers, the true worshipers. Now, I don't know about you, but if there's a true worshiper, there would have to be a false worshiper. I don't want to fall into the category of a false False worshiper. I want to be a true worshiper. Must worship the Father 
in spirit and in truth. And in truth. Now you understand with me today when we talk about the spirit and the word that the word in scripture is likened unto seed. It's likened unto seed. The Bible, even Jesus taught that parable. As a matter of fact, sometime this week in your study, study the parable of the sower and the seed. And I'm going to tell you why you need to study that parable. There's many parables in the Bible. There's many parables, stories that have a spiritual application. There's many parables in the Bible. But the one parable of the sower and the seed, Jesus said, if you don't have an understanding of the sower and the seed, if you don't have, a, if you don't have an understanding of the sower and the seed, you won't understand any of the other parables that are being spoken. In other words, you've got to get this down. I, you don't need to go to multiplication and division until you learn two plus two equals four, right? In other words, he's saying, don't you, you're not going to graduate. Don't jump to the book of Revelation. Don't try to understand what Daniel's toes mean or, or the horns or anything like that. Don't, don't, don't try to understand any of that Bible prophecy until you first understand the parable of the sower, the seed, and the soil. You see, the Bible tells us in Mark 4.14, 4, Jesus was breaking it down for them. He said, the sower soweth the word. The sower soweth the word. So the seed, it's my Bible. It's really our seed bag. It's really our seed bag. We call it our holy Bible. It's really our holy seed bag because it has the seeds. It has the seeds that God has planted in his word. And everything in his word is coded with the DNA to produce what God says it will produce. It's already there. You hold an acorn in your hand between your fingers. Inside that acorn that you hold between your fingers, God has designed a mighty oak tree. It's in the seed. It's in the seed. Every seed, whether it's corn or whatever, you hold that seed, you plant that seed. Everything that you will eat at your table is contained in that seed. But seed alone will not produce. Seed must go through a process called germination. Germination. You can hold it up all day long. You hold your seed bag up all day long. Starve to death spiritually. Because the seed has to be germinated. The seed has to be germinated. You see, sometimes the, Bible's, the Bible tells us they that worship God must worship God in spirit and in truth, word. There are those that simply want a knowledge of God. They grab a book. And it is possible to read this book and get a partial understanding of this book by just reading it. But you cannot get the full revelation and product of this book without the Spirit. Because just as seed alone will never grow into a mighty oak, just a knowledge of this will never produce. You see... God is not out to impress your intellect this morning. God wants to become intimate with you. God doesn't want, you don't, you don't need to come to church so your, your IQ, your spiritual IQ is increased. We need to be here today because we want to draw closer to him. That's why we have this Bible. I want to become what this Bible says that I can become. I want, to become all, I want to become all I can be on this earth because one day, because I have the, the seed of the incorruptible God planted in me, the Bible says being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed. Just let that sink on us for a moment. They that worship God must worship God spirit and in Truth. If you ever get off balance with that, you ever get off balance with that? You ever just get to where you want to read your Bible? You don't want to pray? You don't want to get moved on? 
you become stagnant. You become stagnant. Oh, you got the knowledge. Oh, you know how to baptize. You know how many gods there are. You know what 10% is. You know a lot of things about the Bible, but you're dead. You're dead. But then again, if you just get a hold of the Spirit, you can only get with it with the choir sings. You can only feel Jesus when the choir sings and when the choir gets done singing. If you don't feel real good, you'll go ahead and get your purse or your, your Bible and go ahead and go on home. You know what that produces? Fanatics. They have one year of worshiping God. Wild. They never get their life transformed. They never turn into a good, a good person that knows how to love their neighbor. Maybe seated. They never turn into a happy marriage. They never really raise good kids that stay in the church because they're just, they're just a fanatic. They, can, they gotta have the beat of the drums. Can I tell you, you go to the jungles and do that and apes in trees start going. I don't have to have. It's good to have that. That's the little bitty taste test they give me before this comes. But this is really what I'm after. I'm going to worship him and the Holy Ghost. Oh God, I want to know you. Oh God, I'm open to you. I don't care what anybody says or thinks about my hands lifted. I'm going to worship. I don't care what anybody thinks or says about me hollering, hallelujah, I'm going to worship. I don't care what anybody thinks about me. I am going to worship. Germination is a strange process. And I borrow this from a man named Morton Kelsey. Germination is a strange process. It contains both death and life. Like a new year, the old is cast aside. The new begins. The new begins when water seeps through the husk and miracles occur. In arid Arizona, as long, after long wet winters, the earth comes suddenly to life. The desert blossoms. Seeds lying there dormant for many years waken to life, laying purple blankets over vast slopes and painting hills with red and orange. Grain unearthed in dry uh, Egyptian tombs planted in moist soil begins to swell and sprout. From the seeds Constricted point of view, germinating is not a pleasant process. Penetrating through the shell, the water stirs activity. The germ of life is quickened, swells, and begins to live. In other words, the seed alone will not germinate. The seed must have the water, and the water causes the seed to germinate. And the water is the spirit of our God. We must have the Word of God along with the Spirit of God. First apostolic family today, let us ever desire to hear the Scripture, but let us ever desire to be moved by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost has got to be a welcome, a welcome one here in this room. We must walk into this room and pray prayers that sound something like this. Oh God, if you don't come down tonight, we're all in trouble. God, if you don't anoint my ministry tonight, we're all in trouble. God, if you don't come down and touch us, we can be talented, but we're no different than talented, non-truth, denominal churches in our city. God, we need the Holy Ghost. God, we need the Holy Ghost. Without the Holy Ghost, there's no germinating. You can have a Bible tucked under your arm and never be changed. God, we need. Let us see if we can find some typology. Brother Hammond, every, every Bible doctrine 
will be found in typology in the Old Testament. Every Bible doctrine will have typology. That's why the tabernacle is such a studied thing among us apostolic Pentecostals. Because the tabernacle is typology of the plan of salvation. The gate, only one gate, Jesus is the only way. The altar, he died on the cross. The labor, the water, the washing. The presence of God and the Holy of Holies all typify. As a matter of fact, if you could see an aerial view, if the way that God told Moses to lay the tabernacle out, if you were to take an aerial view of the tabernacle, the furniture arranged where God said to place the furniture, you would find there to be the form or the shape of the cross filled with typology. So let's find if there's some typology here. Genesis 1, 1 through 3. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God, everybody said that's the Holy Ghost, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Everybody said, that's the Holy Ghost. Verse 3, and God said, that's the Word. You have the, sometimes things just hit me, I'm telling you. It's like when them twinch, twinch you, he's, boy, I just, so, you know, just, 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 just kind of hit you. You see that? We have in the first verses of the Bible, the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Everybody said, that's the Holy Ghost. And God said, everybody said, that's the Word of God. So we have the Spirit and the Word. They that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. So if nothing's happening in your life, if nothing creative is happening in your life, worship God in spirit and truth because God said, let there be light and there was light. When you got spirit and truth germinating together, something's coming out of the ground. Something's coming out of the ground. Come on, worship him this morning. Spirit. And truth. Let's see if we can find another. Ezekiel 37, verse 3. Ezekiel 37, verse 3. God said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again, he said unto me, Prophesy unto these bones and say unto them. Everybody say, That's the word. Oh, you dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord unto these dry bones, unto these bones Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews upon you and bring flesh upon you and cover you with skin and, and breathe breath in you and you shall live. And you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied there was a noise and behold a shaking and bones came together, bone to his bones. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them and the skin covered them above but there was no breath in them. Let me stop right here. The word alone will produce a change. Now, now stay with me now, please. The word alone will produce a change. But the word alone will not produce life. You can't deny the fact that people who have lived godless stumble into a church that only preaches the word and even in error. People have been changed. People have been changed. 
They are more, listen, if you would just simply read and obey the Ten Commandments, you'd be a better moral person. If you just read the Beatitudes and obey the Beatitudes, you would have a different personality. But God didn't come to reform us. He came for us to be reborn. He came that we might have... No, no, it's a reform. <laughs> he came that we might have life and that we might have life more abundantly. Ezekiel preached the word and the word changed from a boneyard, I'm sorry, from a boneyard to a graveyard. They still did. I don't care how much skin they got on them. I don't care how much they look human. I don't care. They're still dead because the world, the, the, the word can bring a change. But it takes the spirit. That's why we need the Holy Ghost. We need the spirit to bring life. I smell this bacon in the oven right now. Verse 9, then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy son of man and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord, come from the four winds, blow a O breath and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as, as he commanded me and the breath came into them and they lived and stood up upon their feet an exceeding great army. I believe y'all know today, I'm not stretching this, but not only in Genesis 1, 1 through 3 is the word and the spirit, but even in Ezekiel's boneyard is the testimony of the word and the spirit gets together. There will be a resurrection of that which was slain. Oh God, we need you. We need you, God. As a matter of fact, go with me to Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55, verse number 9. It's a pitiful time here. It's a pitiful time in the history of, 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 um, of, of, of Israel. Isaiah 55 and 8. God says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Stop thinking God thinks like you. Hello? That ought to go on a t-shirt somewhere. I ought to become famous for that one statement. Where's Chase Condon at today? Stop thinking like... You, you know, stop, stop thinking like you think God thinks. You know, this is how God thinks. No, it ain't how God thinks. Your thinking is so limited. His is so infinite. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Listen to God. I see him kind of doing this with his. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. My thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain, follow it now. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it to to bring forth and bud. What does the water do? Germinate. A dry seed doesn't germinate. Stop thinking I think like you. Stop thinking that your ways are my ways. No, I send the rain. I send the spirit. I send the rain, the water, the spirit. It goes to the earth. And it causes the earth to bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that proceedeth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. For ye shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing. Your atmosphere is going to change. Once we learn how to put the word and the spirit together, there will be an environmental spiritual change in our life. Instead of, the, instead of being 
beat down instead of looking at the glass half empty instead of thinking you're a loser always been a loser always will be a loser instead of thinking everybody's out to get you when you when you bring the word and the spirit together the very atmosphere changes around you you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace the mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands instead of the thorn that's a curse shall come up the fir tree you can build with that instead of the briar that's a curse shall come up the myrtle tree you can build for that and it shall be to the Lord for a name for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off what we need today is not more counseling sessions what we need today is take the word of God mix it with the Holy Ghost and watch God begin to work in your life it'll work for you ma'am it'll work for you my dear friend you're not hopeless you're not without hope today you're not cast aside God's just waiting for you come on everybody praise him right now come on everybody praise him right now oh Holy Ghost come what a pitiful time what a pitiful time in the history of Israel. What a pitiful time. Bondage, death, captivity. But God says in Isaiah 32, 13, somebody say praise the Lord. God says in Isaiah 32 and 13, he says, upon the land of my people shall come up thorns and briars. Yea, upon all the houses of joy in the joyous city, because the palaces shall be forsaken. The multitude of the cities shall be left. The forts and towers shall be for dens forever. A joy of wild asses, a pasture of flocks. Look how pitiful this is. No joy in your home. No joy in the city. No joy. I'm going to tell you something. America not only needs a move of the Holy Ghost. America needs a move of the Word of God. The Spirit alone is not going to help America. It's got to be both the Word of God and the Spirit of God. And the Spirit moved upon the waters and God said, let there be light. And there was light. God says, I, because of your sin, the joy is taken away from you. Because of your sin, things have fallen apart. Because of your sin, but look at verse 15. And when they put it up on the screen, tell me the first word. How long is this going to last? How long is there going to be briars and thorns? How long is there going to be mourning instead of joy? How long is there going to be all of this memory of what we used to have? Until the Spirit be poured out upon us from on high. And the wilderness be a fruitful field. And the fruitful field be counted for a forest. God said, I'm going to turn this all around. He said, I know it's devastation. I know it's desolation. I know it's doom and gloom because of your sin. But God says, if you will allow me to pour my spirit out, if you will listen to my word as it pertains to my spirit, you wouldn't know if the spirit was there if it wasn't for the word. The spirit doesn't work independently of the word. Anything the spirit leads, the word will back it up. That's why anybody prophesied around here, I'm going to take you to the measurement of the book because you can't prophesy something that's not in this book. The spirit does not work outside of the book, outside of structure. It's always been from the first of the Bible. God's always worked in junction with his word. Well, Brother Carpenter, I've been listening to this man. I've been listening to this woman. Now, now they don't baptize in Jesus' name, and, and they don't believe the one God. But I'm going to tell you, I feel something. You better beware. You better tread gently because the Bible talks about deceiving spirits and doctrines of devils. You better keep your seed planted in a good truth preaching church where we always measure everything by the seed bag. Oh, 
Oh, come on, Holy Ghost. Come on, Holy Ghost. I preach doctrine. I need you to reign on us, God. Come on, Holy Ghost. I preached about marriages. I need you to reign on us, Holy Ghost. Come on, Holy Ghost. I preached about my children. I need you to reign on my children. Come on, we ought to take a moment or two and just praise him right now. Hallelujah. Come on, this is what you need today. You don't need another book. You don't need another, you don't need uh, some kind of three, three tricks to get it done. You don't need 12 steps. You need two steps. You need to worship God in spirit and in truth. Come on, praise him. Come on, praise him. I wish somebody would shout until, until your marriage is going to stay on the brink of divorce until there's still, there's going to be hell in your homes until your houses are going to be war zones until you're going to hate to go home and hate to be in the arms of, of the one you married until we're waiting for them to change. And what our families need is a mom and dad to walk through the front door this morning and say, we're going to start worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Hey, friend, if you came to church for a change, you want to change at home, you got to start changing some things right here. Cold, dead, lifeless believers don't get the job done. But if you will worship God, if you will worship God in spirit. My God, I'm stirred. Somebody shout until. Until the spirit be poured upon us from on high. The wilderness be a fruitful field and the fruitful field be counted for a forest. Hey, some of you today got barren land and you would welcome a fruitful field. My God, I'd love to have a fruitful field. It's barren. There's some of you that's got a fruitful field. You've got your confidence in your 401k. You've got your confidence in the security of your job. You are a good moral person, and therefore the structure of your family is there, but there's no life there. Can I tell you, if you let God get on you, he'll turn what is good into better. He'll find a barren land and make it a fruitful field. He'll find a fruitful field and say, let me put the Holy Ghost on that, and I will make that a forest. I will make it. Then judgment shall dwell in the wilderness. Righteousness remain in the fruitful field. And the work of righteousness shall be peace. And the effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. Mighty God today, can I preach to us? Ain't got time for drama. Save your drama for your altar. Families can't even get together anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. God help us. Why don't we get the word and the spirit moving to where we can have some quietness? Anybody just want some quietness? I'm not talking about the level of the sound. I'm just talking about life in general. None this drama business. Oh, got to evade her. Don't call her D friend. I don't say, you say D friend or is it? Unfriend, yeah, that's your proper grammar. Unfriend them and, 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 and all that. Get all this drama stuff. And the whole time, hell is belly laughing at you because you're, you're, you're falling right into his plan. You don't have the joy of the Lord. You're not out witnessing. You got out of the choir. You don't teach in Sunday school. You're not profitable to the kingdom. You do none of this because you're all wrapped up in drama. God, come on, Holy Ghost. Take the drama out of me. Come on, Holy Ghost, come down. Brother needs to love brother. Sister needs to love sister. Husband needs to love wife. We need to love each other. <laughs> Drama people kill me. Man, I don't read. I love loving. Morning, I love fighting. You tell me, you just you find me out right now. 
we get sideways with one another, I'm, I'm going to get this thing fixed quick. I might call you at 2 o'clock in the morning. Hey, brother. Hey, don't you know I'm sleeping? Yeah, I, don't, I messed up right now too. The Bible said don't let the sun go down on your wrath. That, you know what that means? Listen to me today. Whenever you get offended, a 24-hour time clock starts. Get it settled. Not a 24-day or a 24-year, a 24-hour. I love loving. I don't love fighting. I love getting along. I don't love division. Verse 19. Y'all still here with me today? And my people. Somebody say, that's me. And my people. Say it again, please. And my people. I'm going to keep working until we get at least half of us. And my people. That's 70%. And my people. And my people. Yeah. That's 99. There's always one lost. <laughs> and my people shall dwell in a peaceable habitation and in sure dwellings and in quiet resting places when it shall hail, that's trouble, coming down on the forest and the city shall be low in a low place. Blessed are ye. Governments, don't get all tied up in elections. Don't get all tied up in LG, all that. Don't get all tied up in all that political gook because there's hell. I know he's H-A-I-L. That's a storm. There's a storm out there. They can't even tell if they're man or woman anymore. It's crazy out there. Shootings. Suicides. It's crazy out there. But not in here. Blessed are ye that sow beside all waters that send forth hither the feet of the ox. I ain't got time to get caught up in politics. I'm worshiping God. I don't have time to get caught up in all of that. I'm praising God. I'm trying to tell somebody I've got a seed bag of repentance. You can turn your life around. I've got a seed bag of water baptism. You can throw your life around. I've got a seed bag of tithe and offerings. I've got a seed bag. Come on, Holy Ghost, move on us. Musicians, come on. I don't have time for this. I'd love to read to you. You would not have had a day of Pentecost had you not had Luke 24, 49, Obeyed. Luke 24, 49, Jesus said, Behold, I send the promise of my Father, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Come and tell you, you would not have a Pentecost without the Word. You know why we have the Spirit, the Word and the Spirit? Acts 2, 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. It filled all the house where they were sitting. There appeared unto them cloven tongues as a fire set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Again, if that's not a clear Bible teaching that you've got to have the Word and you've got to have the Spirit and the Holy Ghost will come. I don't have time to take it. Acts 8. Bible says when the apostles were at Jerusalem Acts 8 15 or Acts 8 14 and when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received what? They sent unto them Peter and John who when they were come down prayed for them that they might receive the I'm going to the house today, folks. I'm just telling you. If you can't see this, you're like Paul said some, to some people. 
He said, this they're willingly ignorant. You know, some folks really work hard at being ignorant. They deserve that degree. That degree. <laughs> they heard in Jerusalem, Samaria has received the word of God. But they said, wait a minute. Didn't they get the Holy Ghost? No. They said, make a trip down there. Lay your hands on them. Because anywhere the word's at, the spirit's got to be there. Acts 10, Acts 19, at all typology. Then first came the Word, then the Spirit. First came the Word, then the Spirit. One last verse, or verses. The Old Testament, remember I told you that Bible doctrine can be found tucked in typology the Old Testament. The 11th chapter of uh, Leviticus is referring to a dead, something dead, touching something that's either useful or alive. If something dead touches something that's useful or alive, then it becomes unclean because the dead touched it. The typology here is our past life is dead. Our past life doesn't need to be coming up and touching what's now alive. He goes all the way through in Leviticus 11. Comes two verses that got my attention. Deals with seed. Deals with seed. It comes down and it says in verse 37 of Leviticus 11. And if any part of their carcass shall fall upon any sowing seed which is to be sown. In other words, he says, if something dead is found in the seed bag, was it it, uh, out of the ordinary? For mice to get into seed bags. And they define dead mice or insects in the seed bag. He said, if you open up a seed bag and there's something dead in there, he went ahead and said, it shall be clean. Go ahead and use it. Go ahead and use it. It shall be clean. This is what got my attention in verse 38. But if any water be put upon the seed and any part of their carcass fall on it, it shall be unclean to you. God says as long as the seed hasn't germinated, as long as that spirit hasn't mingled with that seed, if it's seed alone, Let anything dead touch it. It can't hurt what's encoded inside. But if a seed have water of germination and there's life going on inside of that seed and something dead touch it, it's unclean. Can I tell you, Satan will not bother you as long as you just have the potential. But you start going around and getting a Bible study. You start going around and getting the Word of God. All of hell will come down and try to lay everything on you to take you back to that unclean life because hell knows there's germination going on inside and hell would rather pull a weed than cut down a tree. Hell would rather get you in your infancy, Moses. Hell would rather get you in your infancy. Would you stand with me right now? Hell would rather reach down. Wow, that germination. Matter of fact, let me give you one last verse. I promise I'll start. I almost try to stop lying to you about one last verse. I, I, let me give you one last verse to back this up. Mark 4 and 4. Well, I'm sorry. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. I'm going to read two more verses. Just, just two. 
Mark 4 and 4. And it came to pass as he sowed. Some fell by the wayside. And the fowls of the air came and devoured it. Later on, they come to Jesus. They said, hey, what's the deal with the sower and the seed? And he begins to break it down. In verse 15, let me, let me say this. He taught the sower and the seed to a multitude. It was only a handful that came around the campfire later that evening and said, hey, we're hungry for knowledge. Hey, we're, we're, we're kind of hungry. I mean, we were back there with the multitude, and the multitude just think you're, you're talking about good farming. They just think that you're talking about just, just, just being a good farmer. But there's something more to this. What, what, what did you really mean? What did you really mean by this? I'm going to tell you something. There's a crowd here. But the sad thing is, there's just about a handful of us here today that are saying, yeah, that's right. What that man, what that man. Oh, I, no, no, Bill Carpenter, I believe what you're saying. No, you don't believe because you've not acted. Faith without works, you don't have faith. Now, please, I say that in a sweet spirit, all right? But the truth of the matter is, there may not be as many people in heaven as you think there's going to be. Because hungry people are going to heaven. A multitude, he taught it to a multitude. He, he had a crowd 10 times his size and he taught that parable. But there may have been less than a crowd that's in this section right here that just got around the campfire and said, what, 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 there's got to be something. We're, we're hungry. We're hungry. I want my life changed. I'm tired. There's got to be something. There's got to be something. And then in verse 15, Mark 4, 15, he said, and these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh the word that was sown in their hearts, lest they be converted. Right when that germination takes place, hell comes. Hell comes. And Satan was likened to a bird. And the bird eats the seed with its mouth. Oh, yeah, you... you I know what the Bible says. I know what the Word says, but you really don't have to be baptized. Oh, I know what the Word says, but that's talking in tongues is not for you. Oh, I, I know what the Word says, but that, that, that tithing, that's, that, that's really, that's, that, that, that's that, that really, you know what you're doing? You're letting, the, you're letting Satan come and pop, 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 pop. But there's some today that are like Abraham. When Abraham got his sacrifice done, when Abraham got his sacrifice done, he laid it out before God. Then the fowl came and he began to drive the, the fowl away. Get off my sacrifice. Get off my sacrifice. Get off my sacrifice. There's some of you today that need to go home different today. When you get in the car and hell begins to pick, you just get out of this car. Get out of here. I'm going to let the word germinate in my heart. I'm going back tonight. I'm going to live for God. I'm going to serve God. He's going to change my life. Honey, we sit here today. We sit here and we held hands. And for just a moment, just for the moment, when the choir was singing real good, I had the thought that maybe God can put our marriage back together. But we're in the car now going home. And Satan comes down. Don't even try it. Don't even try it. You're a hypocrite. Don't you even try to start doing right. Don't, don't you, don't you, listen. Don't you tired of him pecking around on you? Aren't you tired of him uh, 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 scratching around on you? Why don't you put something up in your life today? that scares the fowl away. We got tired of cleaning bird manure off our fence in our backyard. We got tired of it. Care how much you scrubbed it? Here come them filthy garments. Here they come. Honey, you need to go out there. There's bird manure all over the... I know, I'm going to go. Windex bottling, you know, 
until I made an investment. I can't explain it, but I made an investment in two plastic owls. Plastic. Put one, put one on one post and the other on the other. So it's pretty well taken care of all the bird manure. They ain't coming around that fence much. Nowhere near what they did. Ain't you tired? Ain't you tired of the devil coming and resting on your family? Aren't you tired of going, you can't go three or four weeks without having a major meltdown? Come on, folks, I'm preaching to you today. Come on, let's get real. Aren't you tired? Aren't you tired of having good behavior for a month and going into two or three weeks of, I don't know if we're going to be, come on now. Why don't we just start telling the devil, no, I've got the Word and I've got the Holy Ghost. Come on, let's cry out for the Holy Ghost this morning. Would you join me in the altar? We'll go home by the altar. We need you to cry out for the Holy Ghost. You need to be as desperate as I am. Don't just have a preacher that cries out. Come on, you cry out this morning. You cry out for the Holy Ghost today. Come on. Come on, don't just let me cry out. You cry out. Are you tired of this? Are you tired of the way the enemy's pushing you? Are you tired of addiction? Are you tired of the drama? Are you tired of all of it? Come on, let the Holy Ghost come down. You know the Word. You know the Word. You know the Word. in the altar now. You're either in the altar or in the aisles. We're going to start singing in a few moments. But these people singing can't help you. They that worship must worship in spirit and in truth. Now, right now, if you're serious about change, it will be manifested in how you hunger after God. You've heard the word. You've heard the word. Now it's time to interact with the spirit. It's time for the Spirit to come right now. How hungry are you for it right now? Don't sing. How hungry are you for it right now? <laughs> Woo! Come on, Holy Ghost! Come on, Holy Ghost! Come on! If you're watching at home, stand up in front of your computer and begin to worship God. Begin to worship. Use your voice. Exert energy. It's not easy. You got to break out of the shell. There's a germination coming. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, prayer warriors. Come on, men. There needs to be the low tone of men praying. Ah, yes. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Come on, if you got things settled in your life, Look around you for somebody to pray with today. These signs shall follow them that believe. They shall lay hands on the sick. Go ahead. Go ahead, that's right. Go ahead, that's right.
Come on, I, what I want us to do right now, I feel very compelled. It's time to rebuke dead things that are trying to touch our lives. It's time we need to start rebuking dead things of our past. There's things in our past that are trying to resurrect. I need you to get authoritative. I need you to get bold. I need you to begin to rebuke dead things. Yes. Come on, come on, come on. The promise. You are my children, says the word. I am your God, says the word. Behold, I make all things new. Oh, Spirit of God, come. Spirit of God, come. Come on, there's some things from your past. There's some dead things trying to reach out. Turn to it today and rebuke it. I'm not yours anymore. I don't belong to you anymore. I'm a new creature. Come on, church. Come on, church. Holy Ghost, come down. Holy Ghost, come down. Oh, that's the Holy Ghost. That's the Holy Ghost. That's the Holy Ghost. Come on, man. Come on. Praise pleases God. Praise pleases God. Praise pleases God. But praise also scares off the devil. Praise pleases God. Oh, yeah. Come on, church. Come on, church. We're too close right now. Come on, the Holy Ghost is here. Let him sit down on us. Let him sit down on us right now. Oh, God. Praise pleases God. 